Just Hunt's conservation interview. Here I am at Corumban Wildlife Sanctuary's Frog House. Let's go inside and check it out. Here I am with Mark Fella, the supervisor of reptiles and amphibians at Corumban Wildlife Sanctuary. They'll be talking about their work to help save the tinker frogs. See, how many species of tinker frogs are there? Uh, there's six species of tinker frog, and they're all found in the uh, highlands of Queensland, throughout southeast Queensland and northern Queensland. So, while people think frogs are just amphibians that pop along the ground, but really they're really important for the environment. See, how are frogs so important? They are very misunderstood, aren't they? Yes. Some people think they're really gross and don't want to go near them, and that's okay. But it's uh, good for people to understand how important now how important that they can be because uh, firstly they're what we call bioindicators they're yep. very sensitive animals they have permeable skin so they're going to react to any pollution in the waterways yep. and they're often going to be the indicators to tell us that the environment's really suffering okay uh, there's also huge medical advancement advancements made from research done with uh, frogs yeah uh, people have found some serious, um, seriously important painkillers, some vaccines, um, and other medical breakthroughs, thanks to frogs, basically. Wow. Yeah, so that's just a couple of them. Yeah. Um, if you hate mosquitoes, you should love frogs. That's another excellent point. They're really important to our ecosystem. And uh, could you imagine a world without frogs? We'd be no. surrounded by uh, mosquitoes and bugs, which help also, having yeah. frogs around help keep diseases down too, don't yeah. they? Because of mosquitoes are uh, significant vectors for a lot of different diseases. So yeah. frogs are definitely on our side, aren't they? Yeah. Another one. Lots of action today, that's cool, isn't it? Yeah. So what do you love so much about frogs? I love the, the variety, you know, there's hundreds and hundreds of species of frog and all of them have a different story to tell. Uh, their reproduction is really unique, but then even within frogs, they have so many different nuances and so many different niches to fill yeah. um, that I'll, I'll, I won't learn everything about frogs in my <laughs> lifetime. So yeah, always something new to learn about them. So what are tinker frogs threats? Tinker frogs threats are um, introduced species in a big way. So sometimes uh, cattle or, uh, are allowed to graze in the national parks where they live. Uh, another one is uh, the chytrid fungus, yes. which you might have heard of. Now this can be transferred by introduced species, but sometimes the, the introduced species will actually trample and physically destroy parts of their habitat. Yeah. Uh, they're the main two uh, significant threats to tinker frogs, uh, but it's believed that climate change and an increase yeah. in climate could really have a negative effect on them as well. Yeah. So what is Corumban Wildlife Sanctuary doing to help save tinker frogs? Well, we're in our frog safe house, or we call it the frog box, and we're surrounded by hundreds of tinker frogs. And these are uh, a few that we've actually had per uh, got permits to, yeah. to trap and to learn how to keep them uh, happy in captivity, how to breed them, and uh, how to raise the young. Yeah. And we've managed to tick all the boxes in, uh, in that list of achievements. Uh, we've brought them in, we've um, learned how to keep them, we've uh, bred a new generation of frogs, and then we've um, managed to reproduce that captive group, yeah. and we've got some uh, really tiny frogs that I'd like to show you as well. Yeah. I have really good memories of this place, and it's one of my favourite places to visit when I come to the sanctuary. Well, Pat, you're responsible for the official opening of this facility, <laughs> aren't you? So that's something to be proud of. Yeah. So what can everyday people do to help save frogs? Well, often people will come up to me and tell me that they found a frog in their backyard, and that's great. And by providing a, a good habitat for not yeah. only frogs, but all sorts of local wildlife, by planting indigenous plants, yeah. uh, perhaps building a frog pond in their backyard, we can uh, start to create little corridors and... Uh, different environments for the local wildlife, including yeah. frogs, and uh, we can provide them with new homes and maybe uh, help them to live safely amongst us. Also by avoiding different chemicals, yes. like pesticides and herb herbicides, 
be really conscious of what we purchase and what we need to dispose. Generally looking after the environment and trying to reduce our use of plastic and recycling yeah. it where possible of course and of course reducing energy use as much as possible because that's a big contributor to the overall uh, situation with global warming. Yeah. What a beautiful call. It's always amazing to see the conservation work that goes on behind the scenes. So come on, let's check it out. So how endangered are these Liam's Tinker Frogs? The Liam's Tinker Frog has actually been given the status of near threatened. So they're the most stable species of Tinker Frog. Two of them are considered to be uh, presumed extinct and the rest of them are critically endangered. Yeah. So the work that we're doing with the Liam's Tinker Frog, the plan is to hopefully adapt the practices we've used and the successes to uh, in keeping them and breeding them. And uh, fingers crossed we can adapt those practices to some of the more critically endangered species that really need help. So let's look at this Tinker Frog. Yeah, I'm really excited to show you this little guy. Now this is what we actually raise the youngsters in. They are very, very tiny. And you can see this tiny little frog just on the pebble there. Oh. Now he's only a few weeks old. Just going on to about a month old. He's absorbed his tail there. And this is one of the uh, first four what we call metamorphs. Yep. And they've um, Metamorpho uh, metamorphosed from a tadpole into these little guys and these are from the second generation of breeding or what we call F2 generation. He's tiny. He's tiny. We have to have tiny little crickets to feed him with as well. So yeah, we've got our gloves on, we've changed our shoes as we've come in here because we want to make sure that we keep this area as clean and free from tetrid fungus as yeah. well so we don't uh, pass it on to these uh, tiny little guys. All right, this is one we call Goldilocks that uh, is a founder. So she was actually caught from the wild. All right. She's full of eggs at the moment, so that's what we call gravid. And I think there's over 120 or so eggs in there. I don't Gosh. think I'd be able to count them. But she's really, really quite full and she um, hasn't mated with any of those males before. <laughs> but she has produced quite a, quite a lot of young. Yeah. But see how her belly's transparent? You can see all those eggs ready to, uh, to come out in there. So thank you for talking to me, Michael. It's always a pleasure, Patrick. Thanks for coming in today. Cheers.